Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today it'll be Q&A Friday as always. Uh, I'll maybe take a few times to do this, it may be in two or three parts, but because my internet's really slow at the moment and taking a while to load up, so bear with me and if I don't get to your question today it'll be in the following one, probably tomorrow. The first question is from Vegan Triathlete. What is Glasgow like for vegan restaurants and do I eat my, out much? And do I like Asian food? Yeah, well, Glasgow's really good for uh, v vegan restaurants. We've got Stereo, Mono, The Flying Duck, which I go to for the, the vegan fete as well. And there's a lot of cafes popping up lately. Trying, there's a lot of vegan cafes seem to be popping up. It seems to be really booming at the moment. And there's, it's really great to see that people are beginning to adopt a vegan lifestyle and noticing that it's helping your health, the planet, and obviously saving the animals into the bargain. So, all good. It's, I hope it keeps pushing forward, and it's good to see that it's, people are finally noticing that. Do I eat out much? Well, not recently, because obviously with my eating disorder, I've had enough of fear of going out and eating in public, and obviously the, the fear of not knowing the calories and things, which I feel terrible about, because that was what me and my wife really enjoyed doing, and I, I hate not having special moments with her, but I'm going to start pushing myself forward and getting through that fear and doing that again because I really need to for her sake as well because she deserves special times and it's really, really upsets me not being able to do it. Do I like Asian food? Yeah, I do. I love Thai curries and I love spicy foods. I, I love Chinese food, you name it. Indian food, I, I love all that and it's great that... They're all vegan options as well. So thanks very much for your question. The next one is from Christy Wolfington. She says she lost both her parents at a young age. What do I find the hardest part about recovery without them? Well, just not being here and not being able to know what they would say to me and things, but I find that an awful lot, if you speak to them in prayer and things like that, you actually get messages from them that's You've really got to tune into it and I know that they're up there watching me and they want me to get healthy and do it for myself as well as them. And you've just got to try and live every moment for them and know that you will see them again. They're here watching over you and that's what it's all about. You've, you've really got to be able to do it for them. You can't keep punishing yourself because they don't want you to do it and as long as you're here, you're living for their memory. So... Please live for them and do do it for them as well. And if you've got any comments and things, please let me know below and if I can help you out in any way because I know how hard it is without them and just not being able to see them again and no be able to speak to them and it kills you but you've got to do it for them and know that they're there and it's, this is not the end. It's The next life is the real life and that's what it's all about. So thanks very much and I'm sending you my love. The next question is from Ruth SD. What is my story of my animals and how did they come to live with me? Well, uh, my dogs and things, obviously. Most of my dogs were from my, my last dog that died. I had she had a litter of pups and we've had two of them as well. The father that we got, they were all bought before I went vegan and they were bought from pet shops and things like that, which I wouldn't obviously do now because I realise that this. That's given into puppy breeders and it's not the way to do it vegans and play, but obviously you don't know at the time and it's you've just got to make the best of it. But uh, the one in the background here, we got him from a friend. <laughs> so he he's been a great he's 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 no the video is a big beauty. And obviously my guinea pigs and things, we got them from pets at home and things like that. So thanks very much for your question. The next one is from Anonymous. What is my thought in the afterlife and my beliefs? Well, yeah, obviously I believe in the afterlife. I've actually had suffered two heart attacks and maybe you don't believe it or not, but I, I, I actually spoke to my mum and my mum says to me, you, you've get, you get back there, you've got a lot of damage to do, she says. And I, I woke up and I actually thought it was in heaven because I seen like clouds and the nurse had said to me, no, you're, you're not in heaven, she says, you've been in Garton Naval Hospital for the last three months, so obviously I'm a Christian as well and I totally believe in the afterlife and 
yeah, I know that my parents and everything are up there watching after me, so thanks very much for that. Another one is from Anonymous. Could you describe daily mental issues like living with an eating disorder? Yeah, definitely. Well, it's like, I, I, if I could describe it in a couple of words, it's, it's like being possessed. You've got this wee demon in your shoulder whispering to you all the time not to eat, to exercise. Don't don't eat this, you're going to be fat, don't listen to these people, but you've got to realise that that's his, his voice and he doesn't really want to kill you, but he wants to push you to the, the very limits, because if you die, he dies with you. But it's just, oh, it's terrible thinking about food 24-7, for the minute you, you wake up in the morning to the minute you go to bed at night, it's a total, it's the worst thing anybody can go through, it, and you've just got to choose recovery and know that you've got to beat it and constantly fight that voice day in, day out. Recovery is... Eating disorder is not an option, but re recovery is. And you've just got to do it for all the right reasons. And So thanks very much for your question. The next one is from Def Davy. Am I going to the next vegan fete at the Flying Duck? Well, I don't plan to because obviously I've been before in the last three or four times and I don't feel I could show anybody else anything else that I haven't before. But obviously if any of you guys would like to meet up and things and do a wee vlog and feature is on my channel please let me know and I, I would definitely go if that's the, re the reason but that would be the only reason so please comment below if any of you would be going and I'll meet up and we'll do a wee video and it'd be great to see you but apart from that that's the only reason I would be going so thanks very much for your question the next one is from Laura Petrie how do I face my fear foods and do I have any positive goals to achieve by the end of 2016 well, fear foods, I like to, what I like to do is adding like a safe food in with them, so maybe something, say like maybe use, I don't suffer with fear food with like peanut butter, but just for example, say you suffer with, with fear of peanut butter, maybe add it in with a safe food that like you like, say rice cakes or something like that. For me, the, the, the fear foods I used to suffer from was chocolate and uh, obviously fried foods. I've overcome the cho the chocolate and things since I've went vegan. But I would say like I would maybe a, a fear food like that. What I'd used to do was I would get some like chocolate sauce and add it in with obviously my pancakes and things like that. And that's one thing that really helped me is like adding in like a safe food with a fear food and combining it and then gradually move it on and move it up to a, a, another food. The goals I would like to achieve by 2016, well, obviously, first, my health is most important, getting to a safe BMI, getting healthy so I can uh, promote the vegan lifestyle and obviously be the best advocate for the vegan lifestyle and for eating disorder recovery and just gradually jo grow my YouTube channel. I really want to grow this and spread the, the vegan message and be the best advocate for eating disorders and help as many people as I can and obviously do some travelling, spend special time with my wife and things like that so and just basically live life to the fullest and get healthy. So thanks very much for your question. The next one is uh, from Fiona. How many calories am I consuming at the moment? Well at the moment I'm consuming 2,000 calories, but I realise in eating disorder recovery, I need far, far more. You put you, most men, 3,500 plus, obviously, because you've not only get the damage in the, internally, most of all your calories are used up for that process. So I would, obviously, obviously with the restriction, you're there been that much of a calorie restriction for all the, the years past. I really need to push past this and get to the 4,000 4, calories a day. So thanks very much for your question, Fiona. Uh, if I haven't got to anybody else, I'll get to you all in the next video. Please comment below and let me know it, and if I can help you in any way, I'll be obviously be doing more videos of meeting sort of recovery and my, my recent relapses and things. And if you like my vlogs, which I've been doing for like the, what I, eating a day, would you, would you like me to be doing it as, in a different role, say, uh, like, actually me speaking and you see me eating, if you would like that, please comment below as well, and love to you all guys and speak soon.